and welcome back to another video. So the lovely people at Artex actually sent me a few more products for me to try out and show you guys. So let's get into the products that they have given me to test out. Um, first off, you would have saw the little box for the gouache um, paints. And then now I'm showing you guys the Sketch Mix Media Pad, which is cutely named as the Pudu Pudu. And it is 36 sheets of acid three acid-free paper and the paper is actually quite thick it feels more like bristol board or bristol paper and it's a little bit thicker and it's just a bit smoother than like normal cardstock which i really like smooth texture paper whenever working in kind of like sketchbooks or just drawing in general this is perfect for drawing with graphite drawing with like pencil any kind of like dry mediums but also works well with the gouache so next thing that they sent me was actually their masking tape or you guys probably know it as washi tape it has a cute kind of gold decorative element to it along with their logo but it's perfect to mask things off such as borders to get that clean crisp edge but yeah so let's take a look at the contents of what's in this box so like i mentioned the this is a nine tin gouache set. So inside obviously is nine tins of gouache and it comes with a variety of colors, which I think are very common colors in terms of a basic set. So we'll get into a bit of color swatching and color mixing a little bit later so I can explain a few things and a little bit of tips when painting um, from my little bit of knowledge. I wanted to show you guys a little bit of a close up and one of my issues with the packaging, though I do think packaging is quite different from other paints so you can see that the paints are kind of like thick nice and runny and also very glossy and very creamy looking um, you can see when I open the tin some of the paint have dribbled on the side of it and that is due to it traveling in transit during delivery and it was kind of getting jostled around in the delivery box sadly so when opening these containers, make sure to um, clean up the edges before closing them or they'll seal and dry, which isn't great. Um, for the book, like I said, we wanted to look at the exposed binding. So this is great if you like to paint things very flat, which I think is really great design for a sketchbook that's kind of made for gouache painting, even though it's not marketed as a sketch mix media page for like wet medium it does work well for like pencil and pencil crayon and obviously gouache because you can use thicker application i did find that watercolor has a interesting texture and ability to lay differently on this paper so if you're interested i'll leave a photo of one of my washes like above you'll see it in the process as well but um, yeah, if you're interested in that you can definitely try out watercolor in there even though it's not marketed as a um, sketch pad that is supposed to be used with wet medium like watercolor. Um, so I'm showing you guys the beginning stages of me trying to swatch this on camera, but you can see that I had a bit of issues with keeping the tins clean because of them getting jostled around during transit. So I made sure to take some time to clean up the edges and swatching everything off camera so I could slowly clean them up and seal them properly so they can remain nice and moist before I start painting. So I'm actually showing you guys a quick part of my footage where I was mixing a bunch of these different more like basic colors together and seeing what kind of range I could get with the colors so you can see mixing the light yellow and the black together I kind of got this almost yellowy ochre green color so I'm just trying to show you guys the range because when you're given a new set of paints and you're given like a primary color set plus white black and maybe a few other colors it's best to test out all your colors to see the range of your primary set because not every yellow is the same not every red's the same not every blue is the same so they're going to interact a little bit differently so i decided to test that out before picking a subject to paint today and today i'm painting kaido haru from just like the vtuber world i guess um, a lot of you guys are probably very familiar with him i painted him before i believe so or yeah i believe i painted him before so yeah, I decided to paint him because of more of his neutral tones and a little bit of more cooler tones in his outfit that I think fit the palette a little bit better. I did pull some warmer colors um, from the flowers, so we'll get into that a little bit later because I did have some gripes about my own painting, but we'll talk about the gouache and the 
mixed media pad first because I would like to give my honest opinion about the products. So working on the paper, um, I actually really liked it. I'm very, very fond of using smooth paper and this is like beautifully smooth and like thick paper. Like I said, it's kind of similar to like Bristol paper or like a thicker cardstock. And as you can see, I actually didn't have any issues using watercolor. Like I mentioned, it's not meant to be used with watercolor, but you can see it can still handle washes. And the way how I like to use gouache is that I like to add a layer of watercolor first to help establish my color range as well as like shapes and just general colors because I feel like I'm very not very good at mixing colors in terms of using gouache, but I'm very comfortable at mixing colors when it comes to watercolor. So I like to lay down a base to kind of give me that boost of confidence, but plus kind of like a safety net for the colors. Um, but now we moved on to the gouache and I tried my best to mix up a skin tone that would match Kaida Haru. Um, unfortunately, I didn't know I had a little bit of too much blue or ultramarine into my brush. So when I was mixing his skin tone, it got really oddly muted and not like sickly pale. It just didn't fit well. So I had to lift up some of the paint and relay a new layer of gouache. And this paper held up well. It did not um, have any pilling. And when I was using the watercolor, it didn't really feather too much either. So I, that was kind of like a plus. I definitely think I'll use this paper in the future with this gouache or even other gouache sets that I have. Um, because it actually handles washes quite nicely. It didn't buckle too much. I do have a binder clip to help kind of keep the paper from lifting too much just in case because when I'm adding watercolor, I, sometimes I oversaturate the paper with water. So the binder clip just helps just in case, but the paper is quite thick. If you like using thicker application with your gouache, then I definitely think that you don't need to clip it down. The paper should be thick enough to not buckle from the moisture. Um, but um, the gouache itself. So I actually really like the color range that they give you. I even think that for the most part, having black, white, and then even just the primary colors were very helpful and having a limited palette is very nice to use. Now I didn't use, mm, I don't think I used every color in this. I mostly focused on the primary colors. I think I did use the, I think it's like the purple, like the purple or the violet and a little bit of the um, Prussian blue, I believe, and use those to help brighten up a few of the colors that I wanted to use. But for the most part, because I tested some of the colors out prior and with my limited painting knowledge, I was able to figure out what colors I wanted to use and how to mix them appropriately so I can get something resembling Kaida Haru. Um, yeah. Um, just for an exercise, I think it's great to limit your color palette if you can. I know for the most part, a lot of us have like, you know, 24 sets, 18 sets, even like um, 12 color sets, like gigantic sets of like paint or watercolor where you don't have to really mix. And I feel like sometimes we miss out on those opportunities to learn about pigments and colors when we're not kind of limited and trying to learn about what colors can you produce with a limited color palette. Also apologies about the kind of jump in footage. I don't know why I missed the whole portion of me doing the face and the hair um, outlining and detailing. So apologies about that. Um, I think my camera was just buffering. I had a, a humongous section where it looks like it was recording, but it was like a still frame for like almost an hour. I think painting this, I think took two and a half hours. So half of the painting time was unfortunately lost. Um, and I was running out of daylight very quickly. So yay for winter. But yeah, if you're looking for a gouache set and maybe you're a person who don't like, doesn't like having such small containers or you don't like the idea of like squeezing out paint into like on a tube onto a palette then maybe the set would be suitable for you i think it's a great set if you like to work a little bit bigger maybe you like using like thicker brush strokes or you need to apply more paint a little bit more quickly because of how wide the mouth is for the tin now if you're like me and you like to work a little bit smaller 
with a little bit more finer details and stuff you won't be using too much paint so I have a disposable palette that I just have and basically I would just take my palette knife which you guys would have saw earlier which I was using to like scrape paint and stuff and put that onto my disposable palette and then after that I will kind of um just pick at the palette and just be able to reactivate the paint which is the great thing about gouache and use it that way instead um yeah so you can definitely work in both ways if you're more like towards impressionism art like impressionistic stuff then you want to use like bigger brush strokes maybe like bigger brushes this will work perfectly if you want to work smaller like I do and be able to seal off paints one by one if you're not using them then this is also great I love having paints kind of individually packaged like this so I can control moisture level um, especially something that's more sensitive like gouache where they can actually dry out and yeah I think that's about it I'm going to show you guys quick application of the masking tape a little bit towards the end but I'll talk about it right now um, the masking tape is a, I find it a little bit stickier than most washi tape, but it came off beautifully in terms of this paper, but I did do my best to not apply too much pressure on places that already have paint, just in case if it was going to lift, but I didn't have any issues with lifting, so hopefully you guys don't either. I think the design is actually really cute. And it's perfect if you want to just use it for maybe putting stuff in your book. You can use it for decorative elements because it kind of has like a geometric line design and dots on it, which I think looks really cute. Um, but I think that's about it. I had a lot of fun actually trying out these products. I'm super excited to continue using the Sketch Mix Media Pad also. Um, maybe use it for pencil crayons in the future or some other kind of pencil work. And I'll definitely use these gouache in the future as well if I want to work on maybe bigger projects. But hopefully you guys enjoyed watching today's video. I know it's a bit of a short, like shorter video. And if I find the remaining footage, I'll maybe stick it in at the end somewhere um so i don't disrupt the flow of this um but yeah here's the application of the, the the tape i wasn't sure how i wanted to use this exactly so i kind of was planning to do kind of like the upper corner would have like a pale background color i kind of regret using this kind of peachy pink color i should have picked something a little bit more um i think lighter so it didn't match and compete with the flowers in this piece um but yeah i'm saying um a lot because i'm i feel a little bit i don't know misplaced in terms of doing voiceovers again so apologies about that but i wanted to show you guys about using washi tape for your painting pieces you can get those kind of like crisp edges and i think that's about it i'll talk to you guys next time with another video and thank you very much for watching and yeah i'll talk to you guys next time bye